Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Welcome back everybody here to our probably most questionable build that we have made to date. <laughs> and probably our weakest one too, but also the absolute cheapest hard raid PvE vehicle here. So let's get into it. So like I said, this is one of the cheapest vehicles that I've made to date. And as you can see here, it is approximately 206 coins and 80 cents with everything included. And that's actually incredibly cheap. You have to realize most epic parts cost either double that or just straight up more than that. Like here, these caucuses cost 404 coins to purchase. So this vehicle is nearly half that, which is absolutely amazingly cheap. But another benefit of this vehicle is that as you can see here, the armor parts we're using are actually fairly minimal. And the reason why we're doing that is because I wanted to make a vehicle that anyone in Engineers level 15 or below could craft. So I only used parts up to 56 parts, and I only used parts that were available to the Engineers faction 15 and below. So if you're level 15 in the Engineers faction, you can craft this vehicle. Now that being said, in order to actually achieve a power score above 5,000 with only parts available from Engineers 15 and below, we did have to do quite a few things here. So let's go over a few of the features of this car. Now, as you can see here, it is a fairly compact car here, but it actually does handle quite nicely and it can shoot in the distance quite a long way thanks to its defenders that it has mounted up top. All four of them allowing for excellent DPS as well as just some excellent range. But the design of this vehicle also helps out greatly. Since we are a fairly light and weak vehicle, we need to have as much armor as possible to absorb as much damage as possible. Now, and the way to do this is that for the growl cabin, we shoved that all the way in the back here, and we left up some frontal armor up here so that this vehicle can actually absorb quite a few cannon shots and quite a few bullets before this thing is actually going to start buckling under the pressure here. And with that, we also added in bumpers as well around the vehicle to add in some ramming resistance. So this thing's actually a pretty tough cookie here. It is actually fairly difficult to kill unless you are going uh, pretty reckless with this car. Another thing is, is that we're also using the Defender machine guns here. Now three of them are fused here, but you don't have to use fused versions. You can just use regular versions and that works just fine. And the reason why we're using it like so is because the Defenders are absolutely phenomenal machine guns. They have super high durability for a machine gun and they have very low mass and they drain very little energy while of course still maintaining that excellent damage, fire rate, and range, as previously mentioned, shooting way off into the distance. Plus, they're also fairly easy to build around since you only have to worry about one firing angle. You can actually armor up the backside pretty effectively. The defenders also have kind of like a secondary benefit in that because they actually can be mounted on the side there, as you can see above the little yellow squares, you can actually uh, get them pretty well situated with each other and pretty strong here. So you know how I like to say that you want to have each weapon attached to two parts here? So we only have each defender attached to one buggy floor here, but since they can attach to each other, they're actually in a way connecting at two places here, giving them a little bit of extra armor here, which is going to be super, super useful. And in a car like this, you will long perish before you actually lose your guns here. So by all means, you will actually keep these guns on the majority of the time. Now, another kind of uh, feature that we have here is the six redundant tires here. And we use the cheapest tires possible here, the balloon tires. Now, of course, other tires may be cheaper at any given moment, but balloon tires generally command a lower price overall due to the fact that they are crafted in abundance from the engineers faction. Plus they are fairly weak tires, but they, by all means, having redundant versions here will do us more than enough good for what we uh, plan on doing. We also have a generator underneath this car and that allows us with the growl cabin to have a grand total of 12 energy, which allows us to have four machine guns here. So that is super, super useful. And when talking about the cabin here, the cabin we're using is actually the growl cabin. Of course, the growl cabin, a lot of energy potential, decent mass limit and ton it at early on, as well as having phenomenal speed. The main benefit of this cabin is its excellent speed. Speed for this car, while not absolutely important, is something that you can absolutely use. Because getting into 
a proper fighting position or getting to the fight as fast as possible can actually save a game or break a game. Because if you take a long, 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 long time to get to a point, well guess what, your point can be destroyed by the time you get there. So being super, super fast is quite nice. And as you can see here, we're approaching 100 kilometers an hour, which is an excellent speed for a car like this. Another feature, of course, is the radios and radar. That allows you to see further into the distance if you want to communicate with your allies better, or just know where the enemies are. This is actually a fabulous addition to have as well. And of course, the final main thing here is the fact it is so ungodly cheap. The 200 coins that you need to craft this vehicle is super, super nice. And beyond that, I mean, you have a perfectly viable vehicle here for hard raids. Now, are there any downsides to this vehicle? Um... Potentially. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Hmm. But that being said, you can actually mitigate those issues a great deal here, because while your car may be super light and super fragile to a lot of high damage enemies, what you can do is that you can kind of minimize that by playing smartly, playing at a distance, playing behind cover, and trying to strip as many weapons as possible, increasing survivability. And that will allow you to live much longer in this car than would otherwise be normal. So if you play at a distance, take off weapons, you should be alright when it comes to hard raids, especially if you have allies that are willing to take the damage for you. That can increase your chance of survival as well. But like I said, you can also use that speed to your advantage, get yourself to a nice vantage point or get yourself behind cover and just take off one enemy at a time which can be super super helpful if you're ever dealing with a oh crap situation. But other than that guys let me know what you think about this vehicle down below in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see another car that's going to be either PvP, PvE oriented and see what parameters you guys want me to see to do. Because I do kind of like making these cheap vehicles here. It is kind of a, a different building strategy to make these things worthwhile and to make them effective. And it is, uh, it is like a, a weird thing of getting back into basics. It's kind of interesting here, but on that, guys, I want to thank you all for joining me this evening, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye Fifteen person with two hundred coins could reasonably have this. The kill dozer made it with radios. I hear all. Yeah, see, this dude's a bit more built up than me. That's alright. I can see for miles with this build. I got a radio, and a radio, another radio, a couple more radios stashed in the floorboards. Alright, so we gotta play passively here. Oh shit, it's Dawn Children. Who has quasars at this power score? Oh, that's right, because we're at hard missions. I was like, how the fuck do they have quasars at this point? That's right, we're at hard missions. Just let my allies take it all. Funny shitbirds. Alright, so, our armor is gone. And this was the first. It looks like actually having the guns facing down might be a bit of an issue. But we're doing alright. We're not smoking yet. Or I got like five. 30 coins in a day? Eh, I mean, you can get a lot of coins in a day. I mean, for me, if I shell, if I do a bunch of shiv wheels, I can make uh, in excess of 100 coins a day, if not more, depending on how uh, forthright I am on those. So I think they first come from this side, but they may come from the other side. Aha! Uh -huh. Just making sure I. Ooh, goodness me! I'm gonna let these dudes handle it. There you go. Follow my own advice. Stripping weapons first. Stripping weapons first. Fuck you and your little turrets. 
We're doing all right, though. It's not the worst. We still have our guns. We still have some HP. We're still doing a technique of burst firing. And changing us from lunatics. It's all right. The issue is, is that a lot of those uh, three baser factions, uh, they just have a huge saturation of parts. So they're not going to be terribly profitable. No, Quasar. Don't go for me. Take off the weapons. Oh, thank God I still had a bumper. That could have been bad. I do have redundant wheels. Look at that. I survived better than him. Playing hella smart here. Mm-mm-mm. Doing all right so far. And we got that generator nice and clean, so we should be doing all right. I'm staying at a distance here. Ooh, Quasar coming in. Oh, good shit. He fell down. This is the issue. Since we're a little bit weaker, we can't uh, handle him. Direct confrontation, like so. One Quasar off, two Quasar off. That rocket dude in the back can do a lot of damage. Let's get rid of him. There we go. Get rid of him. Beautiful. See, as long as you play smart here, you can get away with a lot of stupid shit. Like, I shouldn't be getting away with the fact that I am rocking some pristine crap. Let's see, I might change this a bit. I might get rid of the uh, large wheels and swap them out for more balloon tires. Because that would improve our firing angles a bit. But I can generally compensate right now. And yeah, see, all these dudes know how to help minimize death. Good job, everybody. Near. Doing all right for the most part. Not getting shot in the back as much as I thought I would. I probably could have uh, benefited from more armor up front. Now this is likely where I'll die. Cause this shit hurt here. There we go. Let's take off your weapon. I'm not too worried about the sparks. There we go. Benefit to this build too. I can actually shoot their explosive bits. So I can actually do a lot of damage here. Is this a raid only build or are you gonna go PvP? Um, you could put this in PvP. Uh, it's not ideal since all the weapons are clustered up in a tower-like formation, but it's all right. It wouldn't be the worst thing. Uh, I wouldn't advise it though because I optimized this build for power score not for, um, not for killability. If I wanted to make a nice low power score or a nice PvP build for a low power score, low income, I could definitely do that. I could throw on some, <laughs> a fuck ton of cords on this thing, on a growl cabin. Oh yeah. That could work. Ooh, get out of there. Do not get touched by these bad things. God, okay, please don't ram me. Ooh, avoid that heat ray of death. Hide behind the tower. One nice thing about this is that at lower power scores, uh, you take less damage and you deal more damage. Uh, relative to your power score. It's based on power score, so... Oh, this helps out massively. 
Ooh, ip, 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 ip. how about you stop your bull, Sherry? Oh, it's more sparks. Thank God the spark does so little damage. We haven't lost a gun yet. Who is that person that said we'd lose these things in two seconds? I want you to fucking apologize. These bad boys been on the whole raid. I haven't even lost a fucking tire yet. Do you have monetization yet? Yes, I recently just got it too. I've only made a few dollars over the course of a week, but I mean, that's still pretty good. I mean, considering that for six years I was making zilch, uh, this is pretty good. Yeah, they went the wrong way. Noise, yeah, it is kind of nice. Downside, I didn't make any money off the 50,000 views or so on the other video, but it's alright, I can handle that. I have some more. Perish the heathen. There we go to make sure we get rid of those fucking rockets. There we go. Good shit, everybody. There we go. Just keep them off. Yoink. Yoink. It's very good that the weapons here are brittle as hell. Four years, no, six years. Actually, I shouldn't say that, though. I had monetization on this channel uh, off the get-go because uh, getting partnered with YouTube was way easier. Like, I had it back in, like, 2013, 2014. Or was it 20? I don't know. Somewhere around there, a long time ago. And then they booted me off the program. I think it was 2016, actually. That sounds more right. Yeah, boy. Ooh, or a dude, go away. Not too bad. And raids, you play small distance. In PvP, this would still be a sketchy build because one cannon shot, one ram, and you're done zone. Plus, all the radios here just inflates your power score. I could do a, a PvP-oriented version of this, where I could st get, strip out all the radios and put in all the other parts like, back in, and that probably would be a better idea. Alright, so we're doing alright for the most part. Uh-uh-uh. No weapons for you. Good shit, everybody. Hey, that was my wheel. Actually, no, they didn't get my wheel. Ah, I wonder if it can't hit my wheel. No, wait, shit, he hit my wheel. Alright, come up here. Pulsar pussy. Come on. There we go. Take it all down. Beautiful job. Hmm. Yeah, spark build, I'm not too worried about him. But he is getting close. The thing is, with a quantum cabin, he wouldn't need the Apollo engine. Because he'd be able to have three sparks just with a 12 energy alone. Woo! Still a bit back heavy here. Doing all right though. And I just want to let you know, I haven't died yet. I legit haven't died yet. But this part may be where I die. Just keep backing it up. Don't let the other big boys get in your way. Uh-uh-uh. You don't need to exist either. Ooh, yeah, he found me. Woof. Okay. That was going to happen at some point. We'll just do some damage from back here. 
let him get his stuff going. Get that Pulsar dude as much as possible. Got one Pulsar off. There we go, two Pulsars off. Hmm. Where are you at? Where are you at? Alright, come on dudes, you gotta get ready to put some fucking lead in that ground there. There we go. Oh, of course, cute little shield there. Woo, okay, scooch around him. Finish him up real quick. Alright, we need to get rid of that retro. Take it off, take it off, take it off, take it off. Oh, good shit. Good shit, everybody. There we go, they done them. There we go, beautiful. You don't need to have any of those anymore. God damn, we good. I'm gonna get going. The stream was nice and helpful. Thank you. Hey, anytime, my dude. And hey, you know what? I might make a video on this because this is honestly a super cheap build. And we're doing all right here. I mean, we didn't even have a fourth person in this raid. And I got first place. Let's see by how much, too. It's pretty good. Champion of the raid can't fucking stop me. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful.